The Russian Emergencies Ministry plane is getting ready to head off to Japan containing uh, rescue workers that will help with dealing with the, the fallout from this disaster, these sequence of disasters that have, that have hit Japan over the past few days. They'll be helping uh, rescuers seeking for those trapped under rubble from the, uh, from the earthquake and also trying to rescue those that have been caught up in the terrible tsunamis that... Um, they took they were triggered by that earthquake now the nuclear disaster that's taken place at fukushima is also taking main focus for russia we heard from Ekaterina Grachova there in russia's far east talking about the um the, what's being done there to make sure that it's all okay well one of the main problems that's come from that um the pro the disaster at the Fukushima nuclear reactor is that 30% of Japan's energy is derived from nuclear power. Now that is severely depleted at the moment as you can imagine due to the situation with that nuclear reactor as well as the uh, precautions being taken over other reactors in the country. So Russia has pledged 150,000 tonnes of liquid gas to help uh, the situation there to get power turned back on in certain places. They're also going to uh, increase the supply of coal to the country and as even the possibility of providing electricity directly from Russia to Japan through an, an underwater cable that links the two countries. Now, power, of course, a, a very important commodity when it comes to Japan trying to get itself back on its feet. Power, very important to those people who are looking to try and find people trapped under rubble to make sure that they can work at night. Also, to make sure that those people seeking medical attention can, those hospitals, have the power to be able to continue to treat those people. Now, Prime Minister Vladimir Putin has said that Russia will stay stand shoulder to shoulder with its neighbour to the east as they face this crisis. We need to continue monitoring the situation in the Russian Far East as closely as possible. I've just talked to the local authorities in the region. The situation there is normal, both from the point of view of people's housing and radioactivity. Nevertheless, the situation must be closely monitored on a round-the-clock basis. Well, the authorities closely monitoring the situation in Russia's Far East, but here in Moscow, they've seen outpourings of grief and sympathy for those people of Japan, the people of Japan who have been caught up in this series of disasters. We've seen an ad hoc memorial being established outside of the Japanese embassy where people have been turning up and laying flowers to show their support for the people of Japan at this time.